Hello and welcome to the DFS underscore PhD show for today, the 19th of November. Remember, you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, someone's got to win that money. Uh, we're going to start off with some congratulations to SM Elliott from the chat. Smells 39 for taking home the 888 yesterday. Hey, like I said, if I can't win it, I want one of you guys to win it. Also, I don't think I was actually in this one because I checked all the 888s I was in and this was not one of them. So I think he held on to it. No, no updates this morning yet. Uh, so a nice hit for music as well up, up on the night. Um, good work, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, working hard out there. MMA was terrible. I'm not even going to go. Do we have any screenshots just in case? I don't think we had any yet. No, no screenshots over in MMA, but that's okay. All right, so on to today's NBA. I don't have any good screenshots from yesterday. Yes, bad things happened to me. Don't care. Like, I'm glad it happened to you positively because... Ah, some some various um I made some mistakes. But yep, that's all uh in the past now. Plus on a somewhat, you know, these are the weekend slates, so these are a little bit lighter. Obviously, I'm paying attention mostly to football today. I'm probably gonna include showdown football at the end of this video. I think I'm just gonna pop on over. I haven't done anything for it, so just show you how to do an entire slate from the beginning. And then I'll cut that um a separate preview video from that, I think. Okay, so um on to today's slate though you know the fastest teams they haven't changed from yesterday i mean they will change generally because we're like 12 games into the season right so you do actually need to uh, make sure you're reloading the pace page every single day but it's still the same and um so for today dallas and sacramento dallas is four sacramento is 13 the what do we say average of that is 8.5 so i their pace is going to be pretty fast neither team wants to go slow they will be going fast by mutual consent. And so I did my normal thing for that situation, which I, I make it the high scoring game on the slate and I make it a pick them because I don't know who's going to win. And I don't want the one point I give to whatever favorite to decide who I get points. To. I don't think that's really how it's going to work. I've X'd out Boston. I just think they're going to absolutely manhandle and destroy Memphis. You can still get to some Memphis values if they're still shorthanded. I'm not sure exactly what the situation will be, but I did like the, the run yesterday for Aldama and Conchar and guys like that. Um, I guess Conchar didn't get back at a run with D Rose back. If it's a back to back and D Rose is just coming back from an injury, so if we get news they're sitting D Rose, I'm gonna have more interest in people um, from this Memphis game. But generally speaking, that's gonna be a tough one. It's gonna be a blowout. I'm not taking anybody. No Bain, no Triple J, no Tatum, and no Brown. None of those guys are gonna be on the floor at the end of the game at all. In my, I mean, I'm running 20 lineups. None of them. I don't. And I think it's a less than 5% chance that game stays competitive. If you love Memphis, go for it. But that's just the stand I'm taking today. So um, also, like, just not many points going to be scored in that game. So I accentuated it a little bit and subtracted, like, three from each, assuming they kind of hold the ball for the last six possessions of the game-ish because nobody cares anymore. Uh, Houston and Lakers have also just had an inc – uh, Houston, to start the year, let's just look at their pace – this is so different under Ime Udoka compared to before. So just make sure you're adjusting your expectations for, for Houston. They're not playing fast pace like they used to. They're playing like the Celtics used to. So pace-wise, Houston is not a team we can target anymore, but they still are, you know, they're pretty... They have good concentrated usage. We have guys like Fred Van Vliet. We have guys like Jalen Green. We have guys, you know, you can consider almost all their starters still, even, even in a low total game, just because they're going to run a lot. So anyway, I understand how we're getting to these stacks. That's that's what I'm defending to myself. Uh, and then the other teams are just kind of in the middle, you know, like um, Phoenix, Utah, the second highest pace game. So I have it the second highest points. And I do kind of expect Phoenix to beat Utah, but not by five or whatever, by three. So I adjusted the line. Uh, OKC and Portland. I think I put them both up a little bit to make OKC exactly the same points as Utah and then Portland to be a four point dog because I think they're a four point dog I think that's fair I think that's that points you can count on you know like uh often I'm like yeah I mean and that's just my line for the game that's what you should do you should set your line for every single one of the games I've actually I contacted Saberson to be like hey you know you should maybe make this more salient so it's not behind like two clicks to get there this is the most important part so for me at least and I think for a lot of people okay so from those adjustments to the pace, we get to a pretty simple set of most valuable dudes, Keontae George, Skylar Mace, until they stop playing the minutes they're playing or DraftKings adjust their prices, which I guess they're just never going to do. Uh, we're just going to keep playing. Uh, so, yeah, and I guess I'm not I'm not sold on this DeAndre Ayton 
Just because I'm not sure. Oh, against OKC. So this is against Chet then, right? Mm. Chet just had a big moment coming out party type thing. I don't know, like 75% chance Aiden doesn't get in foul trouble. Let's look at his game log. Aiden game log. How many minutes are we seeing? And is it just foul trouble that's stopping it? Or is he having low minutes in games with, yeah. So last game, 38 minutes, four fouls. 35 minutes, 36 minutes. So he had a 26 minute game here, but that's a blowout. I think is why he didn't come back 14 points. Uh, oops, not talking into the mic. Hopefully that has not caused too many issues today. All right. You know, the mic is back pointed at my face and my apologies to people listening to the audio. Thank you all, by the way, for joining me. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now we have like uh, approaching 200 people in both the discord and subscriptions or uh, subscribers. That's what it's like. I'm not charging anybody subscriptions. What am I talking about? Uh, okay, but yeah, so we can expect a lot of minutes from this guy. Like, look at this in the the minutes where it's in the games where it's close, thirty eight minutes from Aiton. So I'm totally on board with this. Thirty seven points. That's definitely in less than thirty eight minutes. Yeah, thirty four minutes projected for Aiton. So he must be just way too cheap. Yep. Don't know what's going on with Portland. They're just way too cheap. So I'm getting to a lot of those guys. Fred Van Vliet. That's too much of him, but I'm still happy with him. Like. I'm happy with getting to like 45% for Van Vliet today. A 3X stand is a very, very strong stand. Like, you know, 30% 30 difference means I'm going to have six lineups with Fred Van Vliet that most people do not. And I'm confident in that. I still think I'm right about my projection for his minutes, et cetera. Uh, mostly his assist and usage rates have gone slightly up with this team. Uh, but, you know, I'm only 3X confident. I don't want to be completely dead, right? So that's that's my stand there. The rest of the guys are all, I guess, it's Portland day. Aiton, Mays, uh, Grant, and Shaden Sharp. What, why? Oh, facing OKC. That makes sense. Team's advanced pace for OKC is the fastest or like sixth fastest. So yeah, that's fine. I'm fine getting a lot of Portland. They they keep it pretty tight and they don't have that many NBA ready players. I mean, if you think that game blows out, which you're counting on OKC blowing them out, which maybe, I mean, they looked fine at the end last night. Uh, you can go to guys like... Who am I who am I trying to get to? Hopefully there's some of these people are on. Wow. Okay. They're not even listed. Uh the people who would play in a blowout for Portland. I'm talking about guys like Duop Reef. Yeah, you could play wow at 0.4%. Do we think it's a 0.4% chance that no? Okay. So I might have to make a fork here with um because Duop Reef gets extended in the games. Wow, 3.3. Yeah, I'm gonna have to include some Duop. Uh, so so basically here's the plan. The Duop Reef play which I have now added and feel somewhat confident in. Fine, I'll make it 20. He's a, he's a high point per minute guy. He's only going to get these minutes if there's either foul trouble or the game blows out. So we have to add those conditions, et cetera. But I'm definitely getting some duop wreath. Are you kidding me? This guy's been coming. Like, am I wrong? Is he not playing like a fair amount of minutes in these games? Duop wreath minutes. He's just, I mean, yeah, he's he's getting minutes. He's getting minutes and he's getting minutes every night. And I mean, like, I don't know, 10, 20, yeah, 20 minutes in the blowout. That's what I'm talking about. If you get this duop wreath in the blowout game, oh boy, you could really take down tomorrow, right? Like, or today, 16, 19 and a half, uh, 21 and a little bit. He can get you a lot of fantasy points. Real, he can, He's a fantasy point per minute guy. So 21 is within the range of outcomes we've seen from him this week. So like 21 is not something I'm uncomfortable putting there, uh, but we do have to cap it, right? That's the, I say 15% chance that Portland gets in um, a blowout and that's Aiton. So I'm doing an Aiton duop reef uh, fork I've talked myself into. So, oh boy, if you like to see hand building, here we come. So this is my first rule of the day. It's a group rule. It's Aiton, uh, Aiton reef. We just call it what it is. And then we do group rule, no more than one. And then we go over here, Aiton, and presumably if I sort by value, Reef. I could also just name search, but come on, I just made him the highest value play. So there's my Aiton Reef fork. I don't think they get there together. Also, Aiton now I can boost a little bit. So this was, I remember how I just said that's Aiton in, in very few minutes, right? That's Aiton in 33.5. He can get five more minutes in this game. And in five more minutes, he gets more than five more points. So where does that put us with Aiton? 43. Yeah, so it's either Aiden or Duop Reef, and I'm going to have him in every lineup pretty much because um, I just don't see who else am I going to start at center. I mean, to like really, maybe John Collins. Um, Sangoon, okay, how many minutes are we projecting for Sangoon here? 
32 and a half. Let's look at Sengun's um, recent whatever. So Sengun, um, game log. I just don't think that's enough minutes for Sengun. I just have seen him playing more. I love Sengun. Yeah, 34, 35, 34. In a close game, he's going to play 34, 35 minutes. How many minutes was that? 32. So I give him three more minutes. Three more minutes puts him at 45. Just because I think that Houston Lakers game is close enough. I mean, it's not close, but uh, yeah, I'm not counting on. I don't think I could count on a blowout here. Honestly, I'm not sure. I know I'm thinking about it. Do I think the Lakers should be favored in that game at all? Do you think that Lakers should be favored in this game? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see. I think it's going to be tough for them to score 112 points, that's for sure. I might make this closer to a pick them at 108 eventually, but I'm not getting any of those players anyway. You can see it. <clears throat> it's going to affect – I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's going to affect very little about my actual pool. Uh, but, yeah, now I'm getting to a ton of of Seng- Shangun. But I'm going to take that down to my confidence in the play, which is probably – the chance he doesn't, he fully doesn't, he stays, he doesn't miss a minute to foul trouble. So it's not just the foul trouble fort condition. It's he gets full minutes and no blowout. 45% is fine, but he's a great play if, if he gets his minutes. Okay, so that means, yeah, Aiton, Mays, Keontae, George. Boom, a nice tight three for the core. You see the rest of them right now. This is probably as condensed. It's going to get pretty condensed because I can't play any Boston guys. I don't feel comfortable that they'll have minutes in the blowout. Maybe that means I could go to Peyton Pritchard, you know, Pritchard get minutes in the blowout kind of argument. But I think he's still priced up. There was a, 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 yeah, 3,700. So that's the reason why you're going to have trouble getting to even Pritchard for the blowout run. Like, and and he's 5.4%. So y'all are already kind of building in the upside for Peyton Pritchard. I don't feel like there's much meat on the bone for me. What do you think the odds are? 15% that he sees like 20 minutes and, and gets there? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I talked myself into it. Peyton Pritchard getting extended to 24 minutes because it's a blowout the entire second half in about 15% of scenarios. I can see that. I have to undo my strict Boston thing. But yeah, that puts him back in. I think. And I think that doesn't, because I put him in manually, all the other Boston guys stay off. Or did they come back as well as a result of my putting him in? Great. Just wanted to make sure I didn't get Tatum and Brown. Those guys I still don't think I want any of. But I will take some Pritchard. I will take some Duoff Brief. Who are the blowout guys for Memphis? That's the other thing you got to think about. Memphis is still pretty thin. What are we projecting in terms of Smart? What are we projecting in terms of Tillman? Projecting Tillman in. Okay, so keep an eye on that. I think he's questionable. Scroll to the left. Yeah, he's questionable. And on the second half of a back-to-back for a big, I'd give him the day, just, you know, generally. If he does get the day, you're going to see me boost that Santi Aldama a little bit higher. You're going to see guys like, um, man, he had a bad game last game, but Roddy was out there for real. Like, how many minutes was he out there? Um, Roddy, game log. I think he was out there more than 20. And if he's out there more than 20, we got to consider him still. Oh, man, he's out there 26 minutes. So, you know, like, it was punishing us. We, but we were sharks, guys. Like, 26 minutes of David Roddy. Look at the very last game. I mean, obviously, four stocks. Who knows? I'm not going to give him all those points. But 25, 28 and a half. I mean, he's 29 and a half. 32. So, 32 is well within the range of outcome for David Roddy. If If – um Tillman's really out so we were not wrong and I'm definitely putting Roddy back there right again and then we'll have to make sure this is a move that only works if Tillman's out but assuming Tillman's out the what they did last time was to I mean honestly like he could get this run even with Tillman in because David Roddy's kind of getting those minutes with um <clears throat> how many minutes 23 okay so they're almost projecting him correctly because the actual what was his actual minutes? Was uh, 26? Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're just expecting very little usage, and I think I see that too now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not to David Roddy unless Tillman's out. If Tillman's out, then we can boost Roddy. Um, but we've got to really pay attention to those Memphis guys for blowouts, just like we have to pay attention. If you've got a favorite Boston guy who's not been priced up yet, is Luke Cornette back there now? Is that right? Like, he could, he could see those blowout minutes. Like, if you want to, eh. He's not seeing regular rotation minutes, though. 
if you I don't think they do that against Memphis either. They're smallish, so they'd probably just keep going small. I don't know. I can't can't advise that. Can't advise that. Okay. Yeah. The the val I'm not changing my tune. It's Aiton, it's Mays, it's Keontae George. It's probably a few more Portland guys, it looks like. Uh looks like some Sangoon and Van Vliet in here. I would probably get so you it's Sangoon and Van Vliet to your um your taste. I've I've put them at 45%. If if you're more confident in that play than you are in Shaden Sharp and Jeremy Grant, you can up the I think that's what would happen is I would up this 45s and it would become those guys because that's I got those guys when I limited the other ones. Akbaji is going to have the minutes. We'll see if I stick with him. Any these are the guys who are going to go out with any value. Kamari, Kamara and Akbaji. Those are guys who have just like minutes to galore but you have no idea what you're going to get from these guys. You can take them just because in some minutes they might smash. But like if you get any solid value opening up throughout the day, including past lock, swap them out. Those guys are the last on my list, The like including some of these guys below them, right? Like Jabari, Bar Jabari Walker has higher upside. Aldama has higher upside. Nurkic, Eason, all these guys have higher upside and are more on my list than Kamara and Akbaji, who are fine filler plays for now. Just to clear, clarify, pretty high on, definitely on the chopping block. But yeah, everybody else, fine. No no concerns. Highest leverage, Mays, Gordon, Aiden, exactly the same. So no surprise. I've just been saying the same names to you a bunch now. So I will say, remember, you're good enough. You're strong enough. And gosh darn it, someone's got to win that money. And hey, might as well be us.